Creators at Work, a series about the creative people of the Berkshires in Western Massachusetts. We visit their homes and their studios to catch a glimpse of their artistic passions and learn what inspires them. Today we meet Mark Johnson and Maurice Peterson. Originally from Pennsylvania and New York, they now live in the Berkshires where they own Seven Salon Spa in Stockbridge. Maurice, also known as Pops Peterson in the art world, spends much of his time photographing nature and doing portraits of people, rendering them in his unique style. I've always, since I can remember, done some artistic pursuit or other. I started out when I was like four studying piano and did that for about 10 years. But unfortunately, my mom, who had me learning classics, she didn't understand that playing music should be fun and not just drudgery. So I was, hello. So I was um, practicing every single day for a half hour and just basically not enjoying it at all. So when the opportunity came up to go to an artistic high school, I dove into drawing and painting. I fell in love with the Berkshires back in 86 when I came here to the Tanglewood Institute. I used to be a classical clarinet and saxophone player. I studied here for that summer and just fell in love with the area. I used to be a serious competitive swimmer in like my young years in junior and senior high school and actually through into college. I've been swimming since the age of six competitively and I'm highly decorated at the state and national levels. Most recently, I won the gold and the bronze medal at the Gay Games in Sydney, Australia. Maurice and I met swimming at the YMCA on the east side in Manhattan. When I was 23, I was swimming one day and almost like ran into Maurice coming head on to me at the pool and we stopped and started talking and you know went out for lunch after that and just started seeing each other. At first I was married to a woman. It was um, a different day. It was not, it was a dark time for people who were gay. You had to pretend to be straight. So we got married and fell in love and had a kid. You know, when Maurice and I first started living together, um, it was a little difficult for me because I was very, you know, I was pretty young to have a child in my life that was of that age. Uh, I think I was probably like 26 or 27 when we started living together and she at that point was like maybe 11. So it wouldn't have been likely, you know, in my natural life that I would have a child of that age. But it was a lot of fun. Um, Honestly, sometimes it was even more fun to be around her than even Maurice. <laughs> Having a, a young teenager in the house, a teenage girl. I never had a sister, so um, I always wanted one. So at that time, I think I tried to think of her more like a young sister. And I actually was the one that did more of the planning of like Sweet Sixteen parties and um, surprising her with things at Christmas and stuff like that, more like I think a mother would do. No offense to the dads out there who do things like that. But now, at this point, after all these years, like I think of her like as my daughter. Now that I've grown up and she's grown up and it's brought a lot of joy to my life to have um, her in my life. Just like I said, I'm like another person to love. And we actually got married three years ago in Lenox at Stone River Farm on our 20th anniversary. All the ducks were running around everybody's feet. On behalf of Mark and Maurice, Mark's parents, Bob and Mary Ellen, and Maurice's parents, Pierce and Lucille, who are here with us in spirit, I wish to welcome you here today. When we got married, um, she said that she was so proud that, you know, Mark, she always considered Mark her father, and now it was official and she couldn't be happier. It means so much to me that everyone that they love could be here to just experience such an amazing day. I've always considered Mark one of my dads when I talk to my college friends. I'm like, oh, I'm going to visit my dads, you know, but now it's official and it's so amazing. I just love her. I mean, there's nothing I love more in, 
you couldn't possibly love anything more than your own, own child. When we used to come up, we knew nobody except the guy who sold us the house. We didn't know that he's the only one we saw. We knew and we never saw him. So um, we could get, a, being New Yorkers, we could just get away with anything. We would go to Tanglewood, you know, 10 minutes before curtain, find three square feet right in front of the stage, just plop our stuff down, not care who we were in front of, just like we were home, you know, back in the city. But now, as soon as we step in, in Tanglewood, it's, Mark, Reese, hi, you know, hi. Everybody knows this. We can't get away with anything anymore. Well, we're not trying to get away with anything. No, not that we want to. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have to mind our P's and Q's when we're in town. The move up here was one of the most terrifying things I ever went through. It, we left a wonderful, fantastic, that house apartment with 360 degree views, George Washington Bridge right outside the window. We could see over Connecticut, Brooklyn. We could see five major bridges. Gorgeous space. New York was my home. I lived there my entire life. We started coming here on the weekends, and the weekends became weeks, and the weeks became two weeks, and before you know it, we decided to invest in this building and start a spa here. We had an idea to come up here and open the salon. Actually, it was all Mark's idea. I just went along with it because I was tired of sitting at home with a cat all day doing websites all by myself. I was bored out of my mind and uh, needed a change. And it took a lot of faith and a lot of guts and it was uh, really exhausting, a big adventure and it just happened to turn out fantastic. <laughs> we just decided that we just loved the environment here and the type of people that lived here and just sort of noticed a need for a very high-end spa and salon and we wanted to bring the, that high level of service to this community and we thought there was a market for it so we just threw our whole life and all of our money into it. <laughs> One of the other things that I really love to do, which I've never got to do in my life, is interior design. When we decided to buy this building and to open this business, this was like my showpiece for what I've always wanted to do interior design wise. So we are now upstairs in the spa. Downstairs we do hair and nails. Upstairs we do all the spa treatments. I'm standing in the waiting area right now. Um, we do have three rooms. So in here, clients can have very relaxing services like massages and facials, body treatments. The salon has become like the premier wedding place up here to go to for services for hair and makeup. You know, I had come from this training and lineage from Vidal Sassoon, which is all about, you know, very technically based haircuts and color, and you don't really do a lot of extra finishing work. It's not like fantasy hair, it's very technical, you know, the cut that counts, you know, wash and wear hair. And so I never really had a lot of training in doing updos and and fashion work like that as much as I really needed to to do weddings. So I just like threw myself into it because everybody in the beginning wanted to come to me because I was the owner and they always, they, you know, which is perceived to be the best person in the building, um, which isn't always true. And so I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it after 35 and 40 updos a year. And that's only for the brides because still the bridesmaids and everything need to be taken care of. And now it's probably one of my fortes is like, you know, doing this type of hair, which is kind of funny. You know, you, you're good at what you do. And if you keep doing it, eventually you're going to get it down if you have like the basic skills. Literally the minute I moved up here, I achieved local celebrity status. It was ridiculous. I couldn't believe it. I sing karaoke and... Um, would go to Michael's in Stockbridge to sing, and before I knew it, I had a full page spread in the Berkshire record with a big colored picture, and they called me the king of karaoke. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I left my heart in San Francisco.
I've always been trying to do something to break out and reclaim what I had in my youth, which was I was really happening in, in the arts, and it was great, and I sacrificed that for family life. So uh, now it's coming back. I always, I said, you know, I only have this opportunity to raise my daughter, period. This is it. I can always start a career later. I just didn't realize how much later it was going to be. <laughs> to my delight and surprise, I started having an art career uh, totally out of the blue. I was just doing cartoons for my blog, and some of them became kind of like portraits. And I must say that no matter how good an artist you are, it really helps to have a great model too. So I was thrilled when Karen Allen asked me to do her son, Nick Brown, who is a fantastic model. I call it Nick's passion because his passion is to work with food. And here he is on Equinox Farm. It was incredible how quickly people responded. They saw something they liked and all of a sudden I started getting commissions to do portraits of kids and pets and then I just took one of my pet pictures into a, a gallery and just to see what she would say. And she said, oh, that's fantastic. I want you to have your own show next month. And I said, well, I've only got seven pictures. How about next year? So I'm going to have my first solo exhibition opening at Lauren Clark Fine Art on Railroad Street, 25 Railroad Street. And the opening is going to be July 12th. I do have a good, solid foundation here in the Berkshires with a great community and a great business that keeps me going no matter what. I wouldn't want to give that up. I would always want to have some place to go. One of the best things about the job is that people always come back and you get to be so friendly with them and you've socialized them with them and, and whatever, but they show up every six weeks. They're going to be there. You get to hug them. You catch up with them. I give so many hugs. I probably give the most hugs in the Berkshires. Everybody likes to come and hug Maurice. And I'm a very good hugger, by the way. So um, that's a great thing to do. I mean, how many people get to do go to work to hug people? It's great. I kiss them, too. He air kisses them. Let's get, let's get real. He, he it's very French. <laughs> and another thing that's really great about having this particular situation is that I do have a place to put my work where people walk in and they see it and I can talk to them and they can talk to the artist. So it's like I have my own little tiny mini little gallery there, which is, you know, it's great for somebody to have that. One of my friends got a really good job um, designing redesigning a hotel that was becoming a high-end rehab facility. And I thought, well, maybe she would buy one of my paintings just to put in the lobby of the hotel. That would be great. So I showed her the one that I printed, and um, it was the Housatonic. And she said, oh, that's terrific. I want you to do two for every room. <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe it. She wanted me to do the whole hotel. So I got really busy and I did all these things and then I showed the, um, the work to the owner who actually had to buy it. So I had really done all these things on spec. And he said, oh, those are good. Well, we need some from the office too. Why don't you do, some, do the whole office building? So I got the office building then too. They're going to have an open house. It'll be great to see what's there and how it looks. So I hear that there's around the corner in the library. Hey, Carrie. Stay downstairs, so I thought what we could do. Okay. Have you seen Maurice's photos? Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. 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 Oh, sorry.
This one's called Stockbridge Road, and this is Stockbridge Bowl. And I don't think this is the permanent place for them. They're going to be hung on walls officially someplace. But for now, just for this occasion, it's pretty fun. Let's go and find some more. Just maybe show us where one of the big ones is? Sure, come on. Okay, great. Come on, come on. Sounds like there's a party in this room. Wait, it's Maurice. I have to wear the hat, right? He's like the hat guy. All right, smile. I did. I did First, all she tells the me, "Look, you got to fix this here. You got to fix that <laughs> there. There's a spot here, and it's too grainy." And then when she gets it just right, she prints it out, and it comes out glorious. <laughs> You're so sweet. And then we frame them and uh, make people happy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I own a gallery, but we also do printing. And I'm a photographer, so I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So, so we make Thank sure God, we I'm make not. sure that uh, <laughs> we make sure that the that the prints and the final product look as good as as the work that he's done. We have parties a lot. We're like the karaoke party house. What do you like about it? Who me? Well, both we both you. love singing. We have very similar interests. We're both very understanding people. We've grown in similar directions in our life. I look at a long-term relationship like something that you work at and try to keep going. And we pretty much spend the day together and we're like each other's best friends as well. I think we have a great personality match. It's all an equation, you know, there's good and there's not so good, there's really good and there's terrible. If, it, if it's still, you know, on the plus side, you're good to go. I love up here, I love the cleanliness, I love the quiet, I love the beauty, and I love the, the community. It's like, I really feel that I'm somebody who belongs and that I've made a difference in people's lives.